If you're struggling to get views on your videos and it feels like the algorithm just is ignoring your channel, well today I'm going to show you how I went from barely getting any views on my videos to now having the algorithm send me four to 500 views every single hour. And that not just led to more views, but also led to more subscribers and me being able to monetize my channel further. So let's go through this step by step. And the first step is to get really clear on what types of videos it is you want to be making. Now that might sound really obvious, but you'd be amazed how many small YouTubers who don't get love from the algorithm skip over this topic or they don't do it properly. And when I say don't do it properly, here's what I mean. See, a lot of small channels hear things like you need to be consistent. And so they take that information, they go, okay, and they post one video a week for you know six months and just assume that eventually their channel's gonna hit this tipping point where the views just keep compounding and compounding and eventually their channel just blows up. But in reality, it doesn't work that way because while being consistent in how often you upload helps. It's not the only area of consistency for your channel. Consistency can apply to the actual content of your videos themselves. So for example, even if you're posting one video every single week, you are not being consistent. If one week you're posting bass fishing videos and the next week you're posting League of Legends tips and tricks videos. Now I know that's an extreme example, but you get my point. So once you've got your niche down, that's when we can really start to work some magic with this strategy. The first thing we're gonna do, let's do some inception level crap and I'll use my own channel as an example here. So you wanna take your niche, in this case it's how to grow on YouTube, and you wanna really thoroughly research it. And I know research sounds super vague, so don't worry, I'm gonna show you like exactly step by step what I do in just a second. But first, I need to address the elephant in the room and that is all the comments down below saying, but Marcus, you were gonna teach me how to you know, hack the algorithm. Why are we doing research? Well, don't take it from me. Take it from Mr. Beast. Anytime you say the word algorithm, just replace it with audience. The algorithm didn't like that video. No, the audience didn't like that video. So basically when it seems like the algorithm is ignoring you, often it's just that the viewers don't really enjoy your content maybe as much as you think they do. And the algorithm's just picking up on that. So for example, if I take this channel, which is a, a pretty small channel, and I come over here to this video, you can see it's only gotten three views in three months roughly, actually more four months now. So pretty terrible result you could say. And now you might think that, oh, the algorithm is just ignoring this video. But if you log into your dashboard, you go to the video, your videos that aren't getting views and you come here and you click analytics. And then from there you come across to reach. What you can see is the algorithm actually promoted this video to over 250 people. But those people didn't click on the video firstly. And for those three people who did click on this video, they probably didn't engage with it as enthusiastically as maybe they engaged with other similar competitive videos. And so that just leads to the algorithm stopping to promote this video because it's clearly not keeping people's attention or satisfying them and just promoting competitors videos instead. But the good news is often the secrets and clues to what it is that satisfies viewers in your niche and entices them to click on videos are hidden in plain sight in your competitors video. And so like I said earlier, the first step in this entire process is to actually just do the research in your niche and figure out who your competitors actually are. And so how I would do this for my own channel, going back to my own channel as an example, would be I might come to YouTube and I might type in terms that are highly related to the terms people in my niche would be typing in. So maybe something like how to get views on YouTube. And then from here, you can see obviously a whole ton of videos have shown up from all these other different creators. And you can just click on all of these different creators' channels and chances are many of them are your direct competitors. And so once you've gone through and you've found all of your direct competitors for this particular search term, you can do it for another search term. So it might be like how get subscribers. And so again, you do the same thing. And I like to actually click on these channels and then subscribe to them on my channel. So I have all of my competitors all subscribed to on just one channel. And not only does that help me keep track of them, but it also means the algorithm often then serves me their content or other new competitors who have sprung up uh, in my uh, homepage recommended videos. So I can often find new competitors without me actually having to search them out. So in my case, I've already done this and you can see that uh, I've got about 124 people who I would consider to be my competitors who are in my niche creating uh, content that would help grow YouTubers channels. You might have a lot more than that. You might have a lot less than that. Either way, figure out who they are, subscribe to them or, or track them somewhere in a sheet or something so that you know who they are. And so once you've kind of done this, what you want to do is you want to take all of these channels you've just found and you want to find the top five to 10 channels 
based on how many views they actually get each month. So not subscribers, how many views they actually get each month. Because often you'll find there might be channels with you know huge amounts of subscribers that actually get beaten by channels with far less subscribers on a views per month basis. Now you can do this manually obviously, but it is a bit of a pain. So the tool I like to use is called vidIQ. If you log into a vidIQ dashboard, you can come across here to competitors. And if you click onto competitors, um, you can see I've already done this for my channel. But if you come down to this list here, you can click in here and you can actually add in your competitor channel. So let's say I was doing like PewDiePie uh, and then I just click on him and I just come down here and click add competitor and then they'd show up in this list. And basically what I've done here is I've added in roughly the top 20 competitors in my niche, but you can see they show up in here. And then what I can do is I can click 30 days in total, make sure this is on views. And this is gonna give me a really easy summary to see who's actually getting most of the monthly views in my niche. So you can see Robert Benjamin is actually getting the most views out of all of our competitors. So he would be a really good example to study. Another good example here is my friend uh, Ed from Film Booth. And vidIQ makes it really easy to find these sort of outlier channels. Now, obviously there's a lot of YouTube tools out there, but I will say that vidIQ is probably the only one I've used almost every single day for the last six to seven years. Now they're not paying me to make this video or say any of this, but uh, I did recently give vidIQ permission to create a special landing page on their website just for you guys, my subscribers, where you can actually get a month of vidIQ premium for just $1. And if you do sign up through that webpage, I will get a little kickback, which obviously helps support the channel and helps me make videos like this. So that is down below if you're interested. But even if you're not, you can still follow along with this video. So let's pick Ed. Let's go to his channel right now. And then on Ed's channel, if I have the vidIQ extension installed, what you can actually see is I'll get these extra little buttons here. Now, again, you can follow along and just do this manually if you want, but vidIQ just makes it a lot easier for me. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this uh, export SCV button. And then we're gonna click on export all of their videos. And it's gonna give us a ton of data that we can really dive into. And I'll show you how to find the gold insights that you can apply to your own channel that will result in your videos starting to get like way more views than they probably are currently. So once you're here, you just hit download CSV and you'll download the CSV and you can open it up in some like um, Excel or if you're a tight ass like me and don't, and don't have Excel you can use a WPS office and then once you open up this sheet you can pretty much get rid of uh, most of the columns just to make this easier so I'm gonna get rid of that and we've cleaned this up because what we're really looking for here as we talked about earlier is we're trying to find what it is that people in our niche really really engage with and enjoy because if we can do that the algorithm is gonna pick up on that and it's gonna work for us in our favor to promote our videos to loads and loads of people and the way I like to often do this is to look at the likes of an individual video because think about it if you're watching a video that you think is really really awesome and you want to show that creator some support the easiest thing you can do is hit like so figuring out which of our competitors videos have the most likes can be really valuable but there's a mistake everyone makes here and that is they just look at overall number of likes so for example they might look at um, this video here which has uh, 5,000 likes and 114,000 views and compare it to this video here, which has 55,000 likes. And they'll go, well, 55,000 likes is far more than 5,000 and so this video might be a better one. And it might be, but it's not really a fair comparison because one of these videos has 100,000 views, the other one has almost 500,000 views, right? And so what we wanna do is not look at the number of likes overall on individual videos to get a feel for what it is our audience and our niche is resonating with. Instead, we wanna look at the like rate. So what I mean by that is how many views does this video need to get on average to get one like? If that number is higher, let's say on average it takes 100 views to get one like on the video. That's usually a bad thing because it means less people felt like they wanted to leave a like on that video, which indicates maybe less people enjoyed that video <laughs> compared to say a video that got a like for every 10 people who watched it. So I'm gonna show you how we can use all this data to find the exact like rate of these videos really easily so we can really clearly see which ones stand out. But first, one thing I like to do is get rid of the smaller videos on this list because they kind of throw off the data a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go equals average um, and you can do this in pretty much any spreadsheet like software, whether it's Excel or Google Sheets or anything. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go average and we're gonna take the views column. We're gonna just select all the videos in here. We're gonna find the average number of views. So the average number of views in this channel's case is 83,000. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go um, and sort this by views, just to make it a little bit easier to manage. And then I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna find every video with less than 83,000 views. 
uh, we're going to delete it. So we're just going to come down here because we don't want it messing up our data and we're going to delete all of that. Cool. So now we're only left with the above average videos. And from here to find the like rate, we're going to do another little calculation in this sheet. Again, can be done in pretty much any sheet-esque software. We're going to go equals and then we are going to uh, select this column here and we're going to divide it by the number of likes. So we're going to go slash and then we're gonna go the likes here, enter. And what that's gonna tell us is our like rate. So on average for this video, this video needs to get 27 views to get one like. So if I promoted this video, for example, and got 27 people to, to click on my promotion and watch this video, chances are that would have earned me one additional like. And then once we've got that number, what we can do is we can just grab this, just apply this formula to all of the different videos in here. And what you're gonna do is you wanna go through here and find the videos with the lowest like rate, because that shows you on average, uh, those videos are getting the most likes per viewer. Um, this one here stands out to me, uh, but I can see it's only 40 seconds. So I'm gonna assume it's just a short. So I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm more interested in long form videos here. Um, so aside from that, if I kind of scroll down through all this list, I can see this video here. It's kind of a bit of a standout, right? 13. So on average, it only takes 13 views for this video to get one like. And that video is titled YouTube mistakes that destroy your growth. And so then that's where we can start executing on the next step of this strategy, which is okay. We found the videos that are really attracting people on this channel. And you can go through here, find all of the, you know, the top five probably videos that are like performing the best in terms of like rate and really dive into them. But for the sake of this example, I'm just going to pick the best one, which it seems to be this one. And I'm going to go to YouTube. I'm going to chuck that title into YouTube and I'm going to find that video, which it looks like it's this one right here. And this is where our analysis starts to come into play. And I'm going to show you the things I really look for in these videos. So the first thing I like to look for is what is the actual video idea itself? What is the premise? What is the concept? So in this case, it's almost like a tips and tricks type video, but it's mistakes. So it's like the, the inverse of tricks, right? So it's the mistakes that destroyed your channel growth. So if I was to try and sort of use this as a case study, I could be like, well, maybe I could create a video on my channel about the biggest mistakes that I think destroy people's growth. And this wouldn't necessarily be ripping off Ed completely because I would be using my own content, my own mistakes, my own experiences, my own thoughts. I would only be using Ed's video idea as sort of a, just a housing for my own content. And you can do this exact same thing with whatever it is the top videos your competitors have and which videos from your competitors have the highest like rates. For the thumbnail, you can see that the way it's kind of positioned is it's like, I wish I'd known. So it's almost like uh, regret. Or like, I wish I had known this. So in my thumbnail, if I was gonna create a video like this, I might try and take inspiration from that and try and you know pose with my face on the right hand side, have a sort of you know disappointed looking face, um, and then you know some sort of phrase and graphic on screen that sort of indicates or gives the vibe of you know I regret not knowing this. And the reason that we look at title and thumbnail even through the lens of which video has the most likes is because if someone clicks on your video because they like the title, thumbnail, and idea and then they are really satisfied by that video content enough to actually leave a like, that's a very positive signal. Now after that, the other thing I'd really look at is the video length. So this video, for example, you can see is about six minutes. And again, I'd wanna try and take inspiration from that and be like, hey, if I was to create these types of videos on my channel, I'd probably wanna keep them around that length because it seems like according to the data from the likes we've gathered, people really appreciate this sort of length of content. And then lastly, we'd wanna actually look at the video itself. Now you can check it out yourself because it's an awesome video, but to kind of give you the rundown, basically it's a video where Ed shares his biggest mistakes, but the way he does it is really, really cool. He kind of pretends that he, he's going back in time to those moments when he actually originally made that mistake using this sort of bucket effect as you can see. And then he sort of commentates on and gives examples as to how this mistake impacted the old Ed, which is really creative when you think about it. How many tips and tricks or mistakes videos are there out there that do something like this? Now it makes sense why the like rate was so high on this video. I could take inspiration from this and figure out, okay, how's a cool kind of story driven way that I could turn my tips and tricks or mistakes video into a story where I walk people step by step sort of through my previous experiences and how I sucked and then share how I fix those things and how it positively impacted my channel. And so this research has got me thinking in a whole different way about how I might be able to create a video like this in a way that would satisfy my audience probably so much more than if I had just created any old tips and tricks or biggest mistakes type video. But before you jump in and do this, I want to warn you, don't make the mistake that I see so many people make 
after they first learn this. And that is analyzing the wrong videos. Don't deep dive and research videos that you think are the best. Use the data objectively, just like I've shown you how to do in this video to figure out what are the best. And you'll probably get better results because I know it's boring and people don't want to do it. But because it's boring, so few people do it, which is why you will have such an advantage over almost everyone on the platform if you can just do this one thing. And again, you can do it manually completely for free. Um, or like, obviously I like to use vidIQ just because it's, it saves me a bit of time and it's faster and easier to do. And you can get vidIQ for one month for just $1, just using the link down below, which you know isn't that much. So be the person who does this stuff properly. I promise you, it will be worth it. You'll find so many insights that'll help you create videos that your viewers will love, which will make the algorithm love you, which will result in more views, more subscribers, and more money for you. But if you're still not convinced and you wanna maybe see the nitty gritty of how I actually put this into practice for a particular video and blew it up to 2.7 million views, you can click on the video on screen and I'll show you the behind the scenes of everything.